And welcome back to SP Channel, guys. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. So any light we see has to have been traveling for at least 13.8 billion years or less. We call this the observable universe. However, the distance to the edge of the observable universe is about 46 billion light years away. This is because the universe continues to expand. This immediately raises a few questions. How can we determine the edge of the observable universe unless our region is the exact center of the universe itself? We can see the observable universe in one direction, but if we look to another, we see nothing but vastness. So where is the exact center of the universe? How do we determine where the edge of the observable universe really lies? How do we judge the exact size of the universe? Is this just an estimation? This is where it gets just a little tricky. You can actually estimate how far a given light has traveled by its redshift. The theory is, and of course this is more than just a theory, this is, this is fact, the further that light travels, the wavelength will lengthen, right? And as the wavelength of light lengthens, it gets what they call a redshift to it. So by the exact color of the redshift, we can roughly estimate how far that light has traveled. Some of the oldest stars in the universe have this redshift to their light because they are the furthest away. But to compact this redshift, what causes these waves to stretch? Well, the estimated age of the universe is about 13.8 billion years. But don't forget that the universe is about 46 billion light years across, the observable universe anyway. This is all led to the redshift that we see in our most distant stars. As the light from the oldest stars in the universe is stretched to suit the needs of the expanding cosmos, it's a stark reminder that time and space are opposing members of the same force. A negative to counter the positive. A counter force, if you will. This binary method is important to recall because we're gonna to touch on this again later on. The universe as we observe it is composed of two fundamental structures that we see repeated throughout infinity. Filaments and voids. These two structures repeat throughout infinity to create what science calls the cosmic web. The first thought a lot of people have when they notice this render of the cosmic web is they make the comparator to synapses or brain cells firing. This is not an uncommon thought. Many people have speculated that if holographic theory turns out to be true, our entire reality may be nothing more than the thoughts of some cosmic deity. But that lends more to philosophy than science. Let's get back on the path of the straight and narrow. Let's turn back to science here for a moment. The Bootes Void, once thought to be the largest void in the known universe. At nearly 330 million light years in diameter, the Bootes Void is one of the largest known voids in the universe and is referred to as a super void. But like a lot of scientific discoveries, we couldn't see the forest for the trees. We were too busy looking to the furthest reaches of space, so busy that we didn't notice things a lot closer to home. Recently, science has discovered the largest known super void in all of the cosmos is quite a bit closer to the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, the Milky Way galaxy sits right in the center of it. The super void has yet to be given a name. It was just discovered recently. It's very uncommon for a galaxy like ours, a spiral galaxy, to not be confined within a filament. This has once again led science to question if our unique circumstances here in this galaxy may have led to the origins of life in the universe. But for now, let's get back to filaments and voids. Remember earlier in the video when we were talking about the negative versus the positive, about two opposing members of the same physical force? Let me introduce you guys to the Kalabi-Yau Manifold. What the Kalabi-Yau Manifold is, is a three-dimensional representation of multi-dimensional space. What the Kalabi-Yau Manifold represents is if dimensions higher than five, higher than six, higher than seventh dimension exist, why can't we see and interact with those dimensions? 
The Calabial manifold mathematically proves that we can't see and interact with these other dimensions because they are twisted, folded, and compacted tightly into one another into this manifold shape. And this all leads back to my original point. So why have I brought all this up? Why have I went to the trouble to bring up manifolds and dimensions and the folding of space? There's a reason. You know, science is factual. It's based in fact. But what fun is science if we can't play with those ideas and come up with our own theories? So from this point on, from this point onward in the video, this is just my scientific theory on what these supervoids are and why they exist and how these voids may not be quote unquote nothing, but they may be in fact something. Remember earlier when I mentioned binary theory, how two opposing sides of the same force could interact and counter one another? What if these supervoids are in fact a lot like the Calabi-Yau manifold? What if the universe through space-time is literally twisting matter and compressing it into these filaments? or even pushing matter outside of space-time itself. What if these supervoids really are just concentrated space-time? A place where the universe folds and twists on itself and pushes all matter to the outside into these filament areas. Much like the kalabi yau manifold represents dimensions curled up and twisted into the same cosmic space. I like to theorize about science, but the theory portion of this show, those are just my thoughts. I'm not trying to con my theories off on anyone. I'm not trying to say this is legitimately what's going on with supervoids. I really just love to talk about science. If you have any scientific theories that you would like to discuss with me or you, that you would like for me to discuss in a future video, make sure to hit me up in the comment section below. You know, I'm just a small YouTuber trying to make it on a big platform. It never hurts to leave a like to comment maybe um leave your thoughts i appreciate each and every one of you guys if it wasn't for you guys there would be no reason to do this the fact that you're there listening the fact that i have a place to release my thoughts that people actually want to hear what i have to say that means everything to me so i just wanted to take this time again to thank you guys for being there until next time make sure to stay tuned to sp channel